Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Fisher. I'll be your host today. I'm an application engineer out of the ProLim office in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today's webinar will be going over to SimCenter 3D added to manufacturing for powdered bed fusion. For those who have not followed me in the past, the last two webinars that I did do was on added to manufacturing. You can find those webinars by going to our YouTube channel. When you go to our YouTube channel, you can subscribe. You can also go into the search area here. For example, here I'm going to put DFAM. You'll see the design for add to manufacturing webinar that I had here. I had also done one on topology optimization. I'd recommend if you have not done so to go ahead and subscribe to that and go ahead and watch those two videos because they will come into play with what we are going through today. Now let's go ahead and look at the agenda that we'll be working on today. The first thing we will do, we'll be taking an existing design. We'll be bringing it into NX Add to Manufacturing. We'll be placing that into a build trade and adding supports. We will then go into SimCenter 3D Add to Manufacturing. We'll set some global settings, material parameters, process parameters, slicing and meshing, and so on. Let's go ahead and jump into NX here. I already have our blade open. The thing we want to do next though, we want to go to add a manufacturing. I want to go into my file, new, and create as a new file under the add to manufacturing tab. We're going to empty, use an empty build tray. We would then go in and tell our part where we want to save it. Once I do that, our next step is it would come in and bring up, select our 3D printer. Here you can see I have three printers already added. I'm gonna go ahead and select my STL file printer here. Now you can see our print bed. Within our print bed, I can now go in and add my part. Many of these commands that are up here can also be found just by right clicking here. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and add my part. For those who have worked in NX in the past and worked in the assembly, this should look familiar to you. This is just like adding a component, except for there is one slight difference. Underneath component anchor, if you have a print thesis created within your part, you can bring it in as a print coordinate system. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and hit okay. Now, if we go ahead and look at this and I rotate this, you can see that our part is laying right on the floor bed right now. That may not be what we want to do. So we have the ability to come over here and move our part. But in this case, I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this, and I'm going to use our automatic nesting. Our automatic nesting allows me to go in there and tell distance between parts if we have several parts in there. We can put the wall distance and the Z level. Here I have a Z level of 10, wall distance of two, and a distance between parts of five. That doesn't matter because we only have one part at this time. However, if we had several parts, we could nest them all at once. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. And now if I rotate my part here, you'll notice we're off the wall here and we're off the floor here. We now have the ability to come in and do the pattern part if we choose to. We could put several parts in there at once. This should look familiar for anybody that maybe worked within an X in the past. This is very similar to the pattern feature. You have your layout here, so you could go circular, linear, and so on. I'm gonna specify my vector. I'm gonna put a second direction in, specify that, and go ahead and select my part. And if we go ahead, I'm just using the handles right here, but you can type this information in. And if we preview it, this is what our print bed would look like. For today, I'm gonna to go ahead and cancel this just because we're gonna do a simulation on this one individual blade. Our next step is I wanna come in here and add our supports. As I stated before, many of the commands that are up here can be found within right clicking on the part here. Here I have create supports. You have automatic, manual, and regional. If we look at the manual, 
Here are the several different supports that we can add. I'm going to go ahead and use the automatic, select my part, and apply it. If we zoom in now, you can see our supports. Our supports will show up over here in the tree. We have the ability to go in and change these supports if we choose also. So here I'm going to go ahead and edit it, go to hybrid, and apply it. Once I do this, this will replace those block supports with the hybrid supports. As you can see here, we now have a different type of support in there. I'm going to go ahead and undo that just for the reason that I do want to use the block support when I do my simulation. Additionally, we have the ability to come in and modify the support attributes. Here within the support attributes, I could turn on an angle. Go ahead and put an angle to this. Right now, even though I put that information is, it has not updated yet, and it shows that it has not updated yet. I'm going to come down here, regenerate it, and now you can see our supports over here on the right-hand side have an angle to it. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off just because that's not what I want when I'm coming in here to do my analysis. But at any time, if I chose to use that, I could utilize that. At this time, if we were happy with it, we could go into the three printer 3D printer queue up there and start editing a build strategy, generating and printing. However, for today's webinar, we are going to jump into some SimCenter, which is embedded within an X. My next step is I'm going to come up to process simulation. I'm going to go ahead and generate my simulation supports. Once I have my simulation supports in there, they will look like a solid block here. I'm now going to come in and do my start simulation process, select my body, and apply that. This will put us into the pre-post. From here, I'm going to come to my Add to Manufacturing tab. If I had a loaded simulation process, I could load it. I could save my simulation process. However, we're starting from fresh here. So you will want to work from the left to the right and go through these steps. The first step I'm looking at is global settings. Within global settings, you have thermal, mechanical, mechanical only, and thermal only. You also have powder simulation. I am not going to simulate the powder for this particular one. However, we are going to do a thermal mechanical. Go ahead and OK this. Our next step we are going to be moving into process material parameters. So the process slash material parameters is a combination of material data and printer properties. For example, here you can see we have our ink canal 718 with a 40 micron layer thickness. Within here, there are several different things that we can do. We can edit it, manage different materials, and manage our process parameters. We'll go ahead and look at some of these, but we're going to leave it on default today, but you do have the ability to change these, and we'll show you where you can do that. So let's go ahead and look at the view edit print job. Within there, you can see that we have our print properties, our laser properties, print material, different um, material definition that we can use. I'm going to just go ahead and cancel that for today, but you do have the ability to change that if you need depending on what machine you have, your abilities, and so on. Let's go ahead and look at Manage Material Properties. This allows me to go in and edit the material if I choose. I can add a new base material. I can view and edit the material. I can change the density, specific heat, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this one and look at, let's go ahead and look at the Manage Process Parameters. Within there, you can see we have our overheating, stiffness dependent, our laser properties. All this information can be changed depending on your needs and your abilities. For today, we're going to go ahead and OK this material, and we're going to move on to the next portion. Our next step is we want to go in and 
define our thermal slicing. If we did not have a global setting for thermal and only have mechanical, we can move on to mechanical, but we're gonna go ahead and do the thermal first. We have an automatic manual and compute it. I have a number of slices of five. If I already had my mechanical slicing done, I could sync it up with that. We're gonna go ahead and apply this. Then we're gonna move on to our mechanical. Within a mechanical, we have automatic manual solver. I'm gonna go ahead and use my solver. We're gonna do a thickness of five and apply that. And then we're gonna move on to our 3D tent mesh. Once I go ahead and apply my tent mesh here, I have the classical approach or messing with facets. We're gonna use a classic approach here. However, if we had a topology optimized model or a facet model, we have the ability of mesh from facets also. Additionally, we have some settings down here that we're able to play with if we choose to. So if we don't get the results we want from our mesh, we are able to adjust certain adjustments here and try to get a little bit tighter mesh. So for this one though, we're gonna go ahead and apply this. And speed it up a little bit. And here, once our mesh is completed, we get a little information window. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that so we can see our meshed part. And then we're gonna move on to some other options here. The next option we look at is we can come in here and we can do some general option strain, I'm gonna leave it on automatic, stress relief, support failure, and so on. For today, I'm gonna to leave it as default, and I'm gonna apply this, and then move on to our solve solution. We'll go ahead and hit our solve solution, and let it run through here, and you will see down here, it will compute through here, give us information, and start going through all of our different solutions. Now we're going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. Takes a, a few minutes to go through all these simulations. Once the simulations are done, it will let us know it's done by this window right here. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then we're going to go over here and look at some of these solutions here. Within the solution, we have graphs that we can come in. And we can look at some of these graphs. So there's several of them within there that we can look at. But we're going to move on to the post process and then look at some of the thermal results and such. Go ahead and close this information window. The first one that comes up is our distortion results. We have our distortion after printing and distortion after cool down and plate removal. Additionally, we can come in here and look at our thermal results. Our distortion results again. Inspection results, we can do the inspection results after printing, after cool down, or after support removal. Let's do one after support removal. And you'll see our chart there and our results. If we come back to inspection again, we can come back and do one after printing, and so on. Next, we have our stiffness curve. When I bring this up, we will get ourselves a little graph here. Gives us our stiffness and our information that we may need. We have an over local overheating results. This here allows me to go in and look at the different layers. So I can adjust this all the way down to the bottom layer and move my way up and see the different results throughout the different layers. And the last, we have a recoder collision direction. Detection. We don't have no um, collision for this particular one, but if you have a particular area that may have collision, you can look at that. Now let's go back and recap some of the steps that we did. We first opened up our model that was an existing blade, and we went into the next add to manufacture and it's created a new part. We went and selected our printer. We added our part. We did automatic nesting. We showed how you could take that nest in and pattern it if we chose to. And then we assigned some supports to it. We went in and we were showing how you could also edit those supports or change those supports to different supports if you need it. And then we moved on to our simulation. We went into our process simulation tab. We generated some simulation supports. 
and started our simulation process. We went into Sim Center within an exits embedded, and we went into our pre post. We went and set our global settings. We used thermal and mechanical, and then we went into our process material parameters. We show how you can change your material parameters along with your printer parameters. And then we went and defined our slicing. Because we used thermal and mechanical for our global settings, we had to go and set both of those. Once we had them set, we went and did our 3D tap mesh. Our last few steps was we went and did our solutions. We showed us different results. We showed the thermal results, the short distortion results, inspection results, stiffness curve results, and local overheating. That concludes our demo today. We're now going to open the floor up for some Q&A. You can also always email me questions at brian.fisher at proland.com. And please don't forget to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe so you can see demos like this and other webinars. Now the um, floor is open for some Q&A.